In December of 1970, I seem to recall that there was a trip to Kennedy Airport that left me plenty of time to explore the telephone smorgasbord that was the bank of payphones at the terminal. I think it might have been a trip to pick up Neil's sister who was arriving on a flight from Buffalo. In any case, the phone company in the 1970s used to make sure that their payphones in transportation terminals were not all served by the same central office exchange. To do this, they would import telephone lines not just from the local central office, but from other central offices that surrounded the area. And that created quite a variety as you'd move from one payphone to another, see that it had a different telephone exchange, pick it up, put in a dime, and explore the differences. Now, most of the payphones in Kennedy Airport were served by the 641 exchange. That was MI1. I don't know the name that stood for. This was a crossbar one, and almost all of the crossbar ones in Kennedy Airport had old-fashioned dial tones. Though, as we'll see in a minute, they weren't all the same. One of the first things I tried to dial, of course, was 311 to see what would happen. <laughs> That is what you would get half the time. Every other time that you did this, you got a similar recording, except it was this. Or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. Two, one, two, three, six. At the time, I wasn't sure whether that was supposed to be 21236 or 37. With time, it turned out it was 21237. All of the crossbar ones in this area went to those two recordings on the code 311. This kind of reminded me of a similar situation from my parents' phone line, where certain codes would go to 5166 and 5167 alternately. 5167. Though I didn't understand this at the time, this was saying something about how New York Telephone built its network during the 1970s. Now the code 660 from a New York crossbar 1 always goes to some sort of a test line. Let's see what it does from the 641 exchange here. This beeping tone is something I've heard before. Cedarhurst 9, down in the far southwest part of Nassau County, has a tone like this, except the beeps are more evenly spaced. See, this thing isn't going beep, beep, beep. It's going bee, bee, ya bee, ya bee. Can't help but notice. And the funny thing is that when you do the fancy ring from this particular exchange, the ring bursts have that same kind of uneven timing as does this tone. I'll dial a seven and show you. I dialed the 7. Next I'll hang up and get the fancy ring. I don't know if everyone's going to discern this and or care, but it is different from the ring pattern that I get when I do this at home. They didn't do this on purpose, it's just that the thing that makes the timing for that tone and the ring is kind of skewed here. Okay, here goes. Ring, a ring, a ring, a ring. The gaps between the rings are so short that it's almost ringing continuously. Just like those beeps.
Now at one point it sounded like somebody else got on 660, as happens back home, and dialed a digit and got a tone. That comes up on the tape right here. There, that sounds familiar. But I don't understand why he's getting a continuous tone when I was getting a beeping tone. And this is just going on and on, so whoever it is isn't going to try to talk or anything. It's probably actually a test man. Anyway, I'm hanging up. There's another exchange here, 526, which is Jamaica 6. Let's pick up a phone. Put in a dime and dial 6. It's a crossbar 1. Same kind of dial tone. But when you call 660, the beeping tone is more typical for Eastern Queens. Maybe you see what I mean. This is the sound I first heard when I dialed 660 from Cedarhurst 9. And if you hang up and do the special ring, it sounds the same as at my house. You know, come to think of it, CE9 has something else in common with Queen's offices. CE9-2888 is not a working number. Please consult your directory and dial again. Yeah, that says something. Now that we're on Jamaica 6, I'm going to just see what this crossbar 1 does if you dial a 2 and sit there. Now, I didn't celebrate this at the time, but the background sound that you hear while you're dialing numbers from this exchange is different from the last one. Let me just cut back to the tape of the last one for a second. See? Each one is unique. Okay, we're back to Jamaica 6, still waiting for it to time out and do whatever it does. You know, this is actually a little weird. The tone that it made for a second is typical, but this? Unique again. The next thing I tried dialing was 958, the thing that tells you the number you're calling from. And you know, from here, it does sound different. Maybe you notice that it's going zero, zero, zero under every digit and the space. Zero, five, two, six, zero, nine, three, one, five. Another thing about this 958 machine is that the digits don't sound the same. It's like a different recording of the digits than I get from home. I wouldn't expect most people to notice that, but it jumped right out at me at the time. Now let's go pick up a 525 payphone. It's also crossbar 1, but it has tones that are different from the last two and actually from most crossbar 1s. so loud. No zero in the background, but what is this? Uh, uh. 
I dialed the two. This office, 525, isn't Jamaica 5, it's LA 5, Laurelton. A different central office, and as you may have noticed, it has a different dial tone than the other two crossbar ones we were using. It also does a lot of things, very, I don't know, elaborate, when you just dial a digit and sit there. So hang on, we're going to get a procession of sounds just by dialing one digit and waiting. Hang on, because this is just the beginning. This is actually similar to something my parents' crossbar 5 does, but on that line, nothing else happens. Whereas here... really loud. But you know, this tone sounds kind of like a cheap imitation of the one I get at home. It's, it's not the same. Hold on, I, I'll play you the one that I get at home. I'll just cut away. There, see, this is the one I know. Scared me to death the first time I heard it. Okay, back to LA5. Still sounds like a cheap imitation to me. Anyway, though it seems an eternity, this actually only goes on for 50 seconds. And then... Kinda like the 660 tone, it's just half the speed with loud clicks. And also, in this particular exchange, the tone is changing pitch on a regular pattern. Now, if I flash my hook... Okay, it went back to that. Let me hang up longer. There's a sound that permeates this exchange. It's everywhere. Even just picking up a payphone. It's a certain squeal and a fast busy signal. The fast busy signal changes pitch over time. The squeal doesn't. Now if we call the mysterious official 7-2, that test line that ends up with the ticking, we're going to hear that Laurelton 5 sound all through it. Here it is in between the rings. Hey, there it was again. It's the song of Laurelton, what can I say? You hear the steady squeal plus the pitch-bending, fast-busy signal all over the place in this particular exchange. And meanwhile, the dial tone, the ring, the high tone for 660 and off the hook, and the busy signals all have a regular pitch variation. A central office like this will have very often more than one fast busy signal. The one we're hearing in the background here has short little buzzes. Bep, 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 bep. But the fast busy signal that rudely interrupts customers dialing when the circuits are busy has long buzzes. 
The code 550 always goes there. No short little buzzes here, so there's more than one fast busy. Okay, enough about the Laurelton tones. I didn't know this at the time, but this is actually the only crossbar one in the world that has this kind. At one point I tried calling my home number, 599-3362, and I forgot to dial 516 first for Long Island. Here's what I got. This is a special recording that Eastern Queens crossbar ones have, not for all vacant office codes, but just for the few that are unassigned in New York City, but assigned in nearby Nassau County and or Southern Westchester County, which has area 914. This dates back to the early 1960s when they first introduced area codes to New York area customers. Prior to that time, you could dial seven digits out of the city into the nearby suburbs. But once they required area codes, they were using this recording to catch people who didn't dial them. What's funny is that in the intervening years, fewer and fewer office codes still go to this because New York City has been assigning those codes now that they can, since area codes are required. And it just so happens that 599, the number of my home crossbar one line, is one of those codes that still comes here. And by the way, had I tried this from one of the 327 phones at Kennedy Airport, I would have found an active so-called party line with people screaming out numbers. Before moving on to the next exchange, let's take one last listen to the LA-5 dial tone. We've heard this kind of a dial tone somewhere else before, without the pitch variation, but where? Yes, from Larry's house when I dialed the code 450. Here's LA5 again. You know, I actually tried the code 450 from this coin phone, and I got a second dial tone, which pretty much sounded like the first dial tone, so I dialed a 2, and this time, it immediately collected my dime, so I decided to leave it alone. Okay, there are other phones here with 276 numbers. Hmm, when you pick up the 276 phone, it has the same squeal as LA-5. And if you listen really, really carefully... That same fast busy signal is there, but you can barely hear it in this case. This sounds like the Song of Laurelton, but 
kind of in a different mix. Hold on just a second while I check the directory. Every one of these phone booths does have a directory. Yeah, it is the same zone as LA5. To find this out, you have to go to the flat rate calling zones for Queens. And it is in the same group of exchanges as 525. The letters are AR6. I don't know what that stands for. So it could be in the same central office building as LA5. With this sound, I'd say it probably is. In any event, let's put in a dime and dial 311. Well, a modern dial tone. We haven't heard one of those in a while. I dialed a 3. And the Song of Laurelton is audible here, albeit remixed and subtle. Okay. Crossbar 5. And here I was thinking L11 was an exotic ID code. Now I tried dialing 599 to see if it gave that special recording, and here's what it did. Gesundheit. Okay, let's try something here. I've dialed a 2. Now from LA5, we got a whole procession of sounds just by dialing a 2 and waiting. Let's see what it does here. And by the way, that <coughs> became a familiar landmark in New York Tell's network for me and friends who I met later. Eventually, the ID got clarified. Now from Long Island, crossbar 5s, when you just dial a digit and wait, it always goes to a signal that's similar to what we heard from LA5 at first, the sort of broken busy signal. So I'm expecting to at least get that here. That was all it was going to do, just the fast busy. From 276, the mysterious clicky noises that you hear as calls go through sometimes combine on the same phone call. This is something I don't hear on either of my lines at home. Next is a call to 620, one of the special office codes that has sub-exchanges in it. And notice that as the call's going through, we hear one kind of mysterious clicky noise followed by another at a low volume. I wish I could say more. I don't know what these are at this point. Here's the first kind of mysterious clickies. And then this kind, which is associated with sub-exchanges. This is a party line I found, just waiting to be used. The line is so loud you can talk right through it, and the recording is so low that you can just ignore it. You don't have to shout or anything. Number. 
Next, a call to a 750 number. It's another one of those special office codes. This has an interesting recording, which you cannot talk through very well. It goes through the same way, with first one kind of clickies and then the other. The number you have dialed has been changed or is temporarily out of service. If you are dialing from the outside, please dial 750-2000 for assistance. If you are dialing from inside the building, please dial O for operator. If you are on dial com, please dial 8222-0111 for assistance. Thank you. The number you have dialed has been changed. If you are on Dialcom, dial 8-222-0111. Sounds intriguing. I wonder what that's about. And now a call to 430. This makes the continuous fast clickies, and then it makes operator tones that you can barely hear, and then it makes the sub-exchange kind of clickies. Now I'm going to confide something in you guys that I did not know at this time, December 1970. And that is that when the clickies sound like this, that is the same protocol as rotary dialing. I didn't realize it because to me, a real rotary dial sounds like this. But in this context that we so often hear, where the last four digits are being dialed to one of these sub-exchanges, it sounds like this, which would be fine if that were the only thing it does. But this same machine, at least it sounds like the same machine, also does this. That's obviously not rotary dial pulsing. And this machine, whatever it is, can do other styles of clicky noises as calls are going through. Listen to the clicky noise on this call. Okay, so what's that? It's a little fast for rotary dialing. With all that confusion, there's another possibility. Some office codes in New York City do this. Come to think of it, it's been a while since we've heard any metallic noises while dialing, isn't it? But that's not surprising, we're on crossbar 5. Oh, come on! What is it, doing a little jig or something? A little dance? Jeez! With such a wide variety of styles of clicky noises that in a way all sound the same, I did miss the fact that in some cases you can make sense of it. In New York, when you call the sub-exchanges, that is rotary dial pulsing. Now let me show you something that could have been gotten from the Atlanta airport on the crossbar 5 there.
This is a call to one of the rural areas. And here it is again, in a very different city, this time calling a rural area. The last four digits are being dial pulsed by something to something. Okay, back to New York's Kennedy Airport. There's one more distinctive crossbar one here, 327, which is Farakaway 7. 327 makes metallic noises after you dial numbers that are different from other crossbar ones I've heard. Kind of higher pitched. Let me give you an example. Here I go calling another sub-exchange. Farakaway 7 also has its own distinctive song, so to speak. It's on the line now with this off-hook idle payphone. You can hear it while I'm dialing a number. And as I get a fast busy signal, trying the code 811, you can even hear it in the background there, at least if you're listening through headphones. You know, at this point, after Laurelton, it feels kind of nice to hear a fast, busy signal that isn't changing pitch. From crossbar 1, sometimes 660 will go through if you dial it in another nearby area code. This barely makes sense, but here's 516 plus 660. hung up on it. That goes through just fine to the same 660 that you would get if you didn't dial 516 first. Theoretically it really shouldn't, and crossbar 5 will never give you the ringback circuit if you dial it in a different area code. Now here's the point. 311 here goes to L11 or 21237. Let's see what happens if we dial 516 and then 311. Oh no! Does this background noise on the recording sound familiar? I'm sorry. We are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again, or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. I'm sorry. We are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the 
unmistakable. That is what used to be our beloved 311. Only recently was it shut down, and now we know that people in Far Rockaway were able to get in on it by dialing 516-311. Amazing. Now, a survey of the other phones around the airport showed that Laurelton 5 could also reach it, 516-311. All of the other exchanges could not. I don't know how many people in these Queens areas knew how to reach 311 this way, but I ended up making friends with a guy in the Laurelton exchange who was doing exactly that. Now, as for this... Something has to be done about that. There are people calling it every day, I bet, hoping that it will come back as a party line, and it isn't. So I'm going to have to do something about that, and having an amplifier, I actually can. I'll talk about what I did in the next program.